Let's walk through the details of the code in this LabVIEW project. I'll begin by pointing out that the same code labeled RTPC main runs without modification on the PC host as well as the RT targets. I'll begin with a high level review of the overall structure and then come back to the details of each process loop. Begin with the UDP sender loop. As long as send datagrams is active, we take the name and bundle that with the date and time and send that as the message to the destination IP and destination port. Any error in this process causes the send datagrams button to be uh, released or reset. In the UDP receiver loop, we wait for incoming datagrams and when received, bundle that information together with the IP and port number of the host that transmitted the datagram. That value is then appended to all of the received messages so far. The third process loop is the IP address display. It displays the primary IP address, and then when you have the multiple output option enabled, you get to see all of the available IP addresses for this particular host. Let's consider the details of process loop number one, the UDP sender. So prior to any of these process loops starting up, we open a UDP port, and that's designated as the listening port, and that's broadcast to these two process loops. Now taking a look at the UDP sender, get the system date and time, and join that up with the name of the host, and then send that off as a datagram whenever send datagrams is enabled. UDP write needs to know the destination IP address and the destination port. Any error messages cause the send datagrams control to be reset. Otherwise, if there's no error messages, uh, no further action is required. Now let's take a look at the details of process loop number two, the UDP receiver. We're using the same listening port as above. And then wait up to 100 milliseconds to receive a datagram. When received, that message is joined together with the information from where the datagram came from. So we have the port and the IP address of the sending host. And that string is uh, fed back around and appended to all of the datagrams received thus far. Use clear messages to reset that indicator back to an empty string. In the event that a UDP datagram is not received in 100 millisecond timeout window, it generates error 56. We clear that and then continue to wait. The third process loop displays the available IP addresses probably have covered this enough earlier and uh, just point out that we have our primary IP address uh, and all available IP addresses and this loop refreshes the front panel indicators once a second. Let's take a look now at stopping these parallel loops with the notifier technique. So draw your attention to the loop controls or the familiar stop sign. Here we have obtain notifier. It's based on applying a Boolean data type. So this creates a Boolean notifier. Here we have the generated reference to that notifier that is passed to each of the three process loops. Send notification happens anytime we have an error or the front panel stop button is pressed. And then that notification is read by get notifier in the other two process loops. Once each loop has stopped, the air cluster is propagated out. And so we need to see all three of the air clusters um, conveying data before we release the notifier. So we want to make sure we only release the notifier after all the loops have stopped. 
Let's finish up by locating the functions on the pellets. Look under data communication protocols and here we have UDP. See UDP open and read and write and close. Those were the four that got used in this project. And finally, draw your attention to the synchronization palette where we find the notifier operations. We see obtain notifier, send notification, get notifier, and release notifier.